Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and today I am back to show you how I use the November 2021 sheet load of cards to create my first set. I hope you'll stick around, see the cards that I create and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared with you a look at the latest sheet load of cards, November 2021, gave you a look at my first set, and told you how you could download the printable for free. Now, if you haven't yet seen yesterday's video, after you watch today's, if you want to download the November 2021 sheet load of cards, make sure to check out the debut video, which I have linked in the description box below. Also, don't forget, after you're done with my video, all of my team of collaborators will be sharing today on their YouTube channels, blogs, and Instagram accounts. So I know that they would love for you to stop by and see what they have created and leave them some love. Whether that's a thumbs up, a nice comment, a heart, and a comment on Instagram, anything is appreciated. All of their links are in that description box below as well. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at the supplies I'm going to use today and then we'll get started on the process. This month's sheet load calls for six pieces of six by six pattern paper. I would suggest getting two sets of three patterns that go together. Instead of trying to make all six patterns go together, it's easier to do those in littler chunks and only three patterns are shown on each of the cards. For my papers, I use the new to me Welcome Winner from Cartabella, and I recently bought this paper pad when I was at Stamp Joy in Des Moines. On the last day my sister and I were there, we stopped by Memory Bound Scrapbooks in Ankeny. And if you're watching today's video before about November 6, 2021, I do have a giveaway on vlog number four in that series where you can enter to win a $50 gift certificate to Tailored Expressions. I will link that video in the description box below so you can see the rest of my haul from Stamp Joy and Memory Bound Scrapbooks and find out how you can enter to win. I chose these two sets of three pattern papers and what I tried to do was find a busier pattern with multiple colors and then two kind of simpler patterns that have those same colors but again, just more simpler, not loud, and trying to compete with each other. So you'll see here on the first one, I have wreaths and potted plants and mitts and milk jugs. And then I just kind of have a navy with light blue pattern and then a green gingham. The second set, there are pine cones, an evergreen tree, and then a little winter wonderland message. And for that, I chose a dark green pattern paper and then kind of a wood plank background. You know that I love some wood grain. Now, sometimes your patterns might be double-sided and you could maybe even mix and match with the back. I really don't like these three together, so I probably won't do that, but it is always an option if your papers are double-sided. For my sentiment, I chose this seasonal greeting stamp set from Gina K Designs. I thought the shape and the occasion would match my sketch and the pattern papers. I plan on stamping that in green asparagus ink, so I got that out. And then you might have noticed on the sketch, I have a little suggestion here for kind of a thread nest or just something behind the sentiment to help it stand out. I am going to try using my Tim Holtz Scribbles dies with some scraps of green asparagus cardstock. I've used this a lot in the past in place of thread nests, but I usually do it with vellum, so I'm hoping it will work just as well with cardstock. For my card bases and my mats, I will be using Desert Storm cardstock, kind of a craft color. 
As always, if I add any tools or products during the process, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But if I ever leave you with any questions, you can always put those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I almost forgot. I would need one more piece of cardstock for my sentiments, but I'm going to end up using some scraps later on. And right now, I don't know if I'm going to use white, off-white, or that desert storm. But as always, you'll see that when I make those cards. Now let's get crafty. To get started, I'm going to be cutting all six pattern papers in the same exact way. I will cut a four inch strip, leaving the remaining two inches for later. And the four inch strip gets cut down to five and a quarter inches tall. Now, because my paper does have the hang tag, there's a little extra left underneath this, but this is really the only scrap left from the pattern paper today. For the two inch strip, I cut this into three different pieces. They're all two inches wide, but I have a one inch tall piece, a three inch tall piece and a two inch tall piece. Now the first one I do cut in the correct order of one, three, two, but since these pieces don't go smack right up against each other, you could just do one inch, two inch and three inch. Just always keep in mind if your pattern paper has a direction, you will want to start with it in the correct orientation before making the first slice. I'm going to keep cutting these pattern papers in the same way and you'll notice on this one the two inch strip I do cut a little bit differently but either way you want to do it is going to work out. Now another thing you could do to speed up the process is if your cutter will cut through two pieces of pattern paper you could do two at once just make sure to hold on to them tightly while you're making the cuts. Next, I brought in two pieces of Desert Storm cardstock and I will be cutting these per the instructions for CS2. Now these are just pretty simple straightforward cuts, but what I did, I cut the two and a quarter inch strips, I cut three of those from each piece before rotating them and cutting them to the final heights. I keep cutting until I have 12 total pieces and the leftovers I will actually use later for my sentiment instead of getting out another piece of cardstock like the cutting guide shows. Speaking of those sentiment pieces, that's what I'm going to cut next. Because these are pretty small pieces, I brought in my Fiskars photo trimmer to make these cuts. I will be using those leftover strips and cutting them down into pieces that are 4 inches wide and 3 quarters of an inch tall. You might have noticed on the printable and on the sketch that there is an angle cut to be made in the right hand side of each of these pieces. I will be showing you here in just a second how I do that, but that is a step that you could always leave off. When I have six sentiment pieces cut down, I just brought in my little pair of nonstick scissors and just cut the end into an angle. I didn't worry about making sure these were all the same, I just did a quick cut. How you proceed from here may look a little different. Normally I would put together my card kits, but before I do that this time, I'm going to go ahead and map my smallest pieces of pattern paper onto my cardstock strips. What you'll do is grab piece B and D from the same pattern, so here it's a gingham. The small one inch piece will be adhered to the top, just aligned right at the center, flush at the top. And then piece D will go at the bottom centered, once again flush right with the edge. Then I brought in piece C of the same pattern and I matted that with a smaller piece of cardstock and this gets centered with an even border all the way around. Now I'm going to keep all of these gingham pieces together to make my card kits just a little bit later. Now while I work on adhering some more of these pieces together, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. If you're new to my channel, these are just fun little questions I like to ask so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Sometimes they're craft related, sometimes they're not. 
Today's is not necessarily craft related. I would like to know what is your favorite thing about the weather turning colder? Now, you might not live in the same hemisphere as I do, so you might actually be in the opposite. You might be turning warmer, but it is definitely taken on a cold front here lately where I live. And what I enjoy most about cold weather is being able to stay inside, get bundled up in my sweatshirts and comfy sweaters, and making chili. As soon as the weather turns cold, I make my first batch of chili. And speaking of that, as I'm voicing over this video on Monday the 1st, I am actually making chili tonight for dinner. I would love to know your favorite thing about the weather turning colder. You can let me know in that comment section below. And don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know you've answered the question and would like me to see it. Now let's put together some card kits. I did separate the two sets of pattern papers that I wanted to go together, and then I just laid each of the pieces out from each pattern. Then I go through and I grab one piece from each of the patterns and mix and match to make my card kits. Now with these cards, if you do use six different patterns or two sets of three, all of your cards will look different. I continue to do this until I have my six little card fronts and I can start putting these together. Off camera, I cut and folded six Desert Storm card bases and then I just adhered all of my pattern paper pieces to the front. The large piece of pattern paper gets centered on the card front and then I put adhesive on the back of the tall strip and I place this to the left side of the card. Now you can either do that or you can move it to the right. This is one place where you can definitely make these cards your own. When the skinny strip is in place, adhesive gets added back to the last piece of pattern paper and that gets placed on this strip. Now, you could always do the two inch piece at the top of this strip and the one inch piece at the bottom, just whatever fits best to your preferences and your like sentiment and what you want your layout to look like. I continue putting all of the card fronts together until all six are complete. Once all of the card fronts were put together, I brought in my scraps of fresh asparagus and my scribbles die and I cut six of these kind of little wreathy looking nests out. These die cuts will mainly be held in place with the foam on the back of my sentiment strip later, but I do want to go ahead and tack them down to each of the card fronts to get an idea of where they'll go. So I play around a little bit with the layout, and then when I like it, I add just little dots of glue, which is this is just art glitter glue in my new fine tip bottles from Amazon, which I am in love with, but I just put dots on the left half of the back of my little die cut nest. This will just keep it in place long enough for me to place down my sentiment later. After I added the glue, I did set these to the side to dry for about five or 10 minutes. While those were drying, I did take that time to stamp my sentiments. Once again, I'm using that Gina K Design stamp set on some Desert Storm cardstock with fresh asparagus ink. Now, since I haven't used this set before, I did try it out on a scrap and I love the way it worked. So I proceeded to stamp all six of my sentiment pieces. I chose three of the sentiments from the stamp set and stamped each of them twice. Now you may notice that I'm not using my Misty and that's just because I had to change the stamps out so often, but I did get out my Sizzix mat so I would have a little cushion below the cardstock to help with stamping with that clear stamp. And here's a look at the six finished sentiments. To add a little dimension to the card, I am gonna pop my sentiments up off the card front with some foam tape. 
The roll I'm using here is the 3 8 inch wide roll and if you've been watching my channel long enough you know that I love my big blue rolls of foam tape. I will have three different sizes linked in the description box below if you want to go check these out. I added a strip to the back of each sentiment and when all of those were in place I ran my hands along the back. I think this helps kind of burnish that release paper so when I go to pull it later to put it on the card it comes off nicely and easily. So here I am, I'm just going to place the sentiment onto each card front. You'll notice here that I have my sentiment aligned all the way to the left of my card. It does go outside the pattern paper piece on the front. I continue to add sentiments to each of these cards until they're all in place and now it's time to add a little bit of bling. For my bling today, I brought in my brand new case of cat scrappiness pearl mixes and sprinkles. I chose the sparkling snow pearl mix for today. I like the way that this is kind of like a white shiny, but then it's also got a silver hue to it. I thought that would kind of match the white from the pattern paper and the silver I just thought would be a nice touch because the snow drifts and the milk cans have kind of a silver look to them. I placed three dots of glue on the front of each card and then place a pearl on each of those. I did kind of mix and match the sizes and sometimes change up exactly where I put the pearls, but here's a close up look at the finished set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards and got a couple tips along the way for your own set. Don't forget now to go visit all of my collaborators who are linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.